All right, we're up to step two. We have our proper free body diagram. What's next? Somebody give me an idea. What should we do next? What's step three on our list? Uh, in the back, Laura? Um, you do the forces for the x direction and y direction. All right, I like it. Forces for the x direction. What are the forces in the x direction, Laura? Um, T2 sine theta 2 mm -hmm. and T1 sine theta 1. Like that? No, minus. Minus. Why do I put a minus sign there? Because it's going to the left. Because it's pointing to the left. Exactly right. What is this equal to? Um, um, and then acceleration in the x direction. Okay. And if it's a hanging beam, what is the acceleration in the x direction? Zero. Zero. Good. So we have one nice little equation here. T2 sine theta 2 equals T1 sine theta 1. We're going to use that again. What about the next step? What should I do next? Somebody else have a thought what I should do next? Yesenia, you had a thought about what I should do next? Yes. Um, put the forces in the y direction. Forces in the y direction. OK. What are the forces in the y direction? Uh, T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2 cosine theta 2 minus mg. And what is that going to equal? Um, mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And what is the acceleration in the y direction? Zero also. Good. Okay, and now look, we have a nice little equation here. T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2 cosine theta 2. And I can move this mg over to the other side. So we'll write it equal to mg, like so. All right, now we need to do some math. Let's do some math. We're going to take this equation right here and let's solve it for T2. T2 equals T1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. And now I can plug it into this equation right here. So what does this equation become? T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2, which we just said is this, T1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2, and don't forget about that cosine theta 2, and all that is still equal to mg, and now I can solve this thing for T1. Look what I get. I get T1 equals mg divided by a big mess, which is what? Cosine theta 1 plus all of this stuff, which is sine theta 1 over, aha, uh -huh, sine theta 2 cosine theta 2. That is tangent theta 2, and it's in the denominator. So now I have an equation for T1. If I know all those things, I can plug in some real numbers and get an answer. And now I can take this answer and plug it back into here and write down T2. So let's put a box around this one. And now T2 is going to be this thing. I'll put the sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 out in front. And then I have to just multiply all that by T1, mg over cosine theta 1 plus sine theta 1 over tangent theta 2. And now you can plug in all your numbers and get an answer. Remember, I said that when you, when you do these problems, keep your variables all the way to the end because that's going to allow you to check some stuff. What we can check pretty easily 
Are the units right? Mg is force. All the sines, cosines, and tangents are unitless. So force here, newtons, force there. Good. Let's take a look at a limit, which is perhaps a little bit more difficult to see, but I'm sure you know the answer already.